Give me something. G'day punters. For those of you out there who don't know what day it is, it's hump day. So that is Wednesday of one of these never ending weeks. We're all facing isolation. And here we are again for the Give Me Something podcast. We're going to give you something. You might have noticed this week we've had a few welcome familiar faces back on board, but we've got back together. Some of us who've weathered this storm, myself, Sugar Felix, and everyone's favourite, slug i'm actually weathering a storm here in perth at the moment i've been bragging about our weather for the past month where you people over east have been dealing with horrific weather i'm now here doing this in the dark that's how committed i am to giving you something but we'll start with you sugar we'll start how are you how is it over there oh fantastic actually georgie the sun is beaming through here in my little man cave but you know what i was just thinking is i raise my mug to you fellow mugs um, I just, can you imagine, the, the podcast is flying, give me something, and we are giving the punters something every single day, but just imagine, we're recording here in the morning, just imagine if we moved it to an afternoon shift and all of a sudden the mug got replaced with a few little sherbets, oh, <laughs> what, wouldn't that make for an enlightened podcast? <laughs> well, I don't even think we even need to give the next guest anything to make him any different at all. We've got you, Slug. Now tell us what's going on in your life. Um, well, it's a, it's a very special day for me and, and for a lot of uh, sports fans. I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit when I when I give my, my tip later on. It's a very special anniversary for someone who's very near and dear to me. Um, but uh, good to see you in the dark there, reminding me a little bit of Dating in the Dark, one of my favourite. Um, t- <laughs> and uh, I think that's a good little segue for Felix there. <laughs> Felix. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, well, I do feel bad for you living over there in isolation with uh, no more than 10 people. Georgie in WA, that must be very, very tough, unfortunately. Yeah, fortunately for you, you're not living in a police state at the moment. Same with you, Shilg, over in there in New South Wales. You're still allowed a little bit of outside activity, but no, no, no. I, I, do you mind just throwing a little lamp on so we can see the goat you're sacrificing in the back? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, well, I can't. I literally have no power. It is a crazy, crazy storm out there. Um, but look... We'll start with you, Felix, seeing as you're up and about. What have you got for us today? Oh, I've got, I've got some actual real sport. UFC 249, Donald Cerrone taking on Showtime, Anthony Pettis. Now, a little interesting fact about Donald Cerrone. He had 50 feet of small intestine removed as a kid. So now, 50 feet? 50 feet. Now, out of all of us, I reckon that Suge probably knows what it's like to get hit in the liver having played one of the toughest sports on earth. You don't want that to happen. Now, the last time that Donald Cerrone take, took on Anthony Pettis, he got his liver almost kicked out of his body, and he's already weak in that area. Showtime Pettis is one of the best kickers in the game. He's coming at your body, and he's coming hard. He also comes out of the gates hard, so we're all sort of moving towards this one spot here. You can probably tell Showtime Pettis is going to absolutely demolish Donald Cerrone here. He can't protect the body and the head. He's 37 years old, one of the best fighters of all time, but he's 37. He's not quick enough to protect the body and the head. So he's going to have to protect that body. We spoke about that small intestine. It's genuinely dangerous for him to get kicked in that region. <laughs> it is a serious... We spoke about that small intestine. A serious health hazard. Well, it's a, it's a massive factor because he has to protect it. Usually you can give up an area and sort of take some pounding there, but he cannot do that there. So he has to protect that body. I reckon he's going to get caught in the head. He's going to get caught sleeping. And Showtime Pettis here for the knockout should be your best bet. And get it done in the early rounds as well. Rounds one or two. We saw that Don Cerrone's a slow starter. Got smacked by McGregor early. Pettis comes out of the gates hard. Doesn't have great endurance, so he's going to want to get this fight done within the first three rounds. So, Felix, when they do the measurements before the fight, they'll have reach, they'll have height, and they'll now have intestine size. Will they? <laughs> they will. Intestine size. And I'll tell you what, Cerrone will be 50 <laughs> feet worse off. <laughs> Why is he still fighting? Is he, is he got... Is he... Got bad credit history or something. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's it. I think when you dangle that sort of $40 million figure in front of someone, they look down at the small intestine and they think, you know what, I reckon it could take just one more beating. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're coming to us every day with some UFC. There's some big fights going on on the weekend, right? Yeah, yeah, massive fight. So Justin Gaethje versus Anthony Ferguson is going to be the big one. So that's that's the big fight, but we've still, we're going to go through the undercard through most of them, of course, spoke about Bryce Mitchell, Charles Rosa, because some of the best value you're going to find is on the undercard. So a lot of a lot of the time that they, when the traders get together and they make the uh, odds for these fights, they really focus on that main one because that's where a lot of the money is going to be going. So you can usually find a little bit, and there's also a little bit of unknown when we talk about some of these fighters. Look, Donald Cerrone, he's lost to three great fighters over his last three, so that's pushed his odds out. But I still think that Pettis as well has been in that same sort of category. Both these guys have had pretty unsuccessful 
last couple of years. So it's pushed those odds out and there's not a huge amount of known stuff about them at the moment. So you'll be able to find some value on all of these undercard fights. I think, and Felix is going to. You go. I was up. just going to say, I think he'll 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 definitely be inspired to win. I just don't think he can stomach another loss. <laughs> good oh. slug. Well, that's a good segue into you giving us your insightful tip. Ah, oh, thanks very much for that. Now, insightful's a word we use a lot, but uh, not something that's ever really ringing true. But I did. Um, I'm going to be looking at omen betting again today, and I'll take a couple of minutes to explain to you why. As I said at the top, it's it's, it's an emotional day for me and many other people who are, <laughs> who are fans of, of the obscure side of things. Now, um, there's a man who, who definitely lives on the far side of the moon when it comes to his, his life prowess, but he was a man who played a, a pretty prominent sport in tennis. And um, 21 years ago, almost to the day, um, this guy reached the pinnacle of tennis. He was named the number one male player in world tennis. Uh, I talk, of course, of the man they called Kalashnikov after a Russian, uh, his country's greatest ever tennis player, Yevgeny Kafelnikov. He is an idol of mine. He's a, he's a man that led me to fall in love with the Russian sports people uh, and indeed their culture. So for those who aren't aware of Yevgeny's exploits, firstly, reassess where you're at but secondly jump onto google or wikipedia or tiktok or whatever it is you're using these days <laughs> some some career highlights from the dual grand slam winner um he was unbelievable unbeatable just all over the court just stuck in just a true russian stoic uh man in that area so a few highlights from him he was the french open champion in 96 and the australian open champion in 1999 He's the last man to have won singles and doubles titles at the same Grand Slam. So that was in the French Open in 96. So that's never going to be done again. He won the Olympic gold medal in Sydney in 2000. Georgie, I know you've been to the Olympics. So yeah. She can say how Didn't special that all. is. Um, I didn't know you guys knew that. <laughs> you told us I, I read it somewhere online. <laughs> um, but finally, I think the thing that really stands out about Evgeny, and it's important to talk about this on his anniversary, is he's a man who hasn't been... Uh, afraid uh, to be critical of, of leader Vladimir Putin and the rest of his Kremlin cronies in Moscow. So he's been having a dig at, at Putin for a few years. And as we know, it's not just like bagging out ScoMo for his you know holidays to Hawaii. It's pretty serious stuff um, when you start dabbling in those areas. So with that being said, um, later on today, we have uh, Serp i Molot taking on Kingstown in the Russian ice hockey. So... As we all know, Serp i Molot uh, means hammer and sickle in Russian. And I think today, Yevgeny's, we're going to see people rise with hammer and sickle and sack Kingstown, which in this scenario is Moscow. <laughs> Serp i Molot are paying $2. And if you need any more reasons than that uh, to bet on them, I think Russian ice hockey isn't for you. And I'm looking forward to our video guy, Harley, who said, can you guys keep it short yeah, for purposes? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, this comes around once in 21 years, you know, and something this good. So, look, I, I'm, I'm happy to take the time, and I think the, the listeners and the viewers are too. <laughs> what do you make of that, Shub? Well, I just know one thing, Georgie. If you were to fall in love with a Russian tennis player, it must and absolutely must rhyme with Banna Mornikova. It's just... <laughs> mate, I completely agree. Oh, mate, I grew up besotted by Anna Mornikova. I went to a game of tennis. It was the first game of tennis where you don't do the left and right. Your head was just parked in one direction. Uh, Anna Kornikova, God bless her. You um, might be doing the left and right looking at that doorway if your wife just said that shit. <laughs> She'll be sitting there too, probably. Um, look, short and sharp, I've been campaigning for Jared Cole, our man, the young dartsman, the chef... He's a dual uh, international, if you like. He plays darts and is a leading chef. Uh, he'll win tonight. He's favourite in two of his three bouts, if you call it bouts. Um, but I'd take the outsider when he's $2.50. That is just money for jam. So that I'll leave it at that. Jared Cole, I'm going to write his Twitter handle as well. He's up to about 700 after our last blast. At Jared Cole. <laughs> We're two blasts for Yes, him. at Jared Cole 180. And I would suggest that we go into his Twitter handle, look at his last post, and if you can... Just simply reply, just so we know you're out there listening. Just reply, give me something to Jared Cole. Right? And I'll be, I'll, have you? That's Georgie. Have you done that? Should, I'm about have to. Have you done that? No, I'll do it right now. Oh. I'll do it right now. Yeah, and I'm Slug, you gave well. a shout out for the man um, to get him some more followers, didn't you? Did you get more than? Shug? Yeah, I think we should gave him an initial nudge of eleven. I think I, I got him up three. Uh, both my brother <laughs> and sister were watching the show, so they jumped on, which was good. <laughs> 
Yeah, so the right. punter's, punter's listening at home. So it's his most recent post. He said, can't thank you enough for the sport. And he's retweeted the modus dart. So we're all commenting on that one. Give me something. Sugar, you are going to start a revolution. Yeah. You're going to, Kim Kardashian broke the internet before. I'll tell you what. Did you see that? Sport Jared Cole is in for it. Give, Give me, me something. At Sportsbet. Yes, at Sportsbet. Come on, mate. You're a company man. Yeah, here we go. There Beautiful. we go. Beautiful. Oh, if you want to have a look Love at it. if you want to have a look at the comment um, below that, Shug, <laughs> have a look at one of the comments already left on there, and we're not going to take that route when we talk to Jared Cole. <laughs> so, so, someone's giving him a little bit of a whack. So. <laughs> well, we'll see if we can Jesus. get him on the show and have a chat about. We'll flood that. him with some positivity. <laughs> Now, I'll briefly touch on some novelty markets. Just to be quick, just to let you punters know what's out there. Of course, the weather's always out that uh, out there. Um, I'll be looking at the overs for Perth. I think that it, sometimes it looks like it's going to be colder, but it's actually quite warm with the cloud cover. ScoMo's tie went off yesterday, the gold payout. Now, I've been spruiking yellow and gold every time. I've spoken about that. That was paying 5 bucks at the end of trading there. So check that out. Silver and blue, the clear two favourites for the guy. He must think it looks good on his colour palette. Now, MasterChef, I spoke about that the first week the show was on. Now, Polin Yo, she was the favourite at two fifty. Now, she's blown out to $5.50. Ronald Panomo, I think that's how you say it. He's come into hot favourite at just $1.60. So, if you jumped on him at the start of the show when he was favourite with Poe, he was paying $3.25 then. There's also markets for house rules. There's markets for the, the golf restrictions, which Hummer spoke about yesterday. There's even one for which Iconic Snack is going to make a return. So plenty to check out there in the novelty section. So if you don't want to trust Slug's really in-depth look on the Russian ice hockey, I think your tip was, I don't even know what you were talking about, then you can go and <laughs> no have a does. look at some novelty markets and see what takes your fancy. All right, so we'll go around quickly. Quickly is the word there, Slug. What have you got? Uh... I have Serp Umolop uh, to win the Russian ice hockey today. Very good. Felix? Ulterior political motivation was the uh, answer she was looking at for <laughs> Slug. But I'll be taking <laughs> Showtime Pettis for the knockout win against Donald Cerrone at $3.30. Sure. The Cole Train, Jared Cole. Just keep backing him. Keep following him. Give me something. Jump onto his Twitter thread. Come on, the Cole Train! <laughs> 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 and I'll just let's go for ScoMo Silver Tie at three bucks twenty-five. All right, thanks everyone for listening. Uh, stay with us, stay safe, wash your hands, and as always, gamble responsibly. Don't stop at the hands. Dostoevsky. <laughs>